Hello everyone, my name is Hannah. Welcome to a new video. Today's video is going to be my spring book haul. So I have a big old stack of books here. These are all of the books that I have acquired since March. So March, April, and May. So three months worth of books here. And then I also have a very exciting unboxing. I am holding myself back right now from opening this. I'm gonna save it for the very end. So, but I'm like, I can't hardly contain my excitement. I'm so excited to open it. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into all the books that I have hauled in the last three months. These are in no particular order. I'm just gonna start grabbing them off the stack. Um, and yeah, here we go. All right, first up, um, I bought all of the new paperbacks of the Throne of Glass series. Um, if you don't know, I'm sure you do, but I have a huge Sarah J Mass obsession and I collect all of her books. I have a whole shelf dedicated just to Sarah J Mass books. And when these came out, I at first I was like, I don't know how I feel because I do really love the original covers, but I've grown to really, really love them. I'm doing a reread of them right now and I'm annotating in these editions. So I'm quite happy about that. But yeah, we've got the Assassin's Blade, which I love the colors on this one. Throne of Glass. Crown of Midnight. Air of Fire. This is one of my favorite covers. Queen of Shadows. Also one of my favorite covers. Empire of Storms. Tower of Dawn. And then Kingdom of Ash. This one definitely is my favorite cover of all the new ones. And I love how like floppy they are. Incredible. So yeah, very happy to have added those to my collection. All right, no rhyme or reason here. Let's just, yeah, let's just go. So next up, I have All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. I have been meaning to read this one for years now, and I finally was able to pick it up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do like a wrap up. I always do that when I film book hauls because I've read most of the books that I've hauled. So I'm not gonna do that. But I have been meaning to read this one for years and a bunch of people were just like talking about it. And it really gave me the push that I needed to finally pick it up. It is a single dad, age gap, grumpy sunshine romance. And I was on a romance kick and I know I love Mariana Zapata's books. So they're very slow burn. So yeah, I was just finally in the mood to pick it up. And so I got it on Pingo Books for pretty cheap. And this is probably my favorite cover of any of her books. I love this cover. Yeah, that's all I have to say. I don't know. <laughs> I'm being so weird right now. Okay, next up, I have some Penguins Classics editions. So first I got the Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Penguins Classic Edition. And I don't know, something about this like classics edition, I just really, really like. The style of it maybe, I don't know, but I really liked it and it was on Pango Books for like $2, I think. So I got this one and then it's now since gotten me on a kick of like, maybe I need to start collecting Penguin's classic editions. So I got Selected Poems by John Keats. Um, I got this one specifically because I want to try to read some poetry this summer. And literally, I only picked this because Stoker from the Veronica Speedwell Mystery Series by Deanna Rayborn loves Keats. And so I saw this and I was like, I just decided I was going to read it. So Hopefully I like it. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about classic poetry. We're gonna see, but from what I do know of Keats, he writes very beautifully. So I got that one. And then also I got Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is on my 23 books to read in 2023 list. I saw the half price books in the edition that would match the rest of mine. So I just picked it up and I'm excited to read it. I'm probably gonna pick it up this fall sometime. Next up, I have A Sinister Revenge by Deanna Rayborn. This is the newest installment in the Veronica Speedwell mystery series. It just released, I think, when did it come out? I think it came out in March. And so I picked it up right away. I ordered it from my local bookstore and got it like delivered on release day. This was one of my most anticipated reads of the year. So I'm really glad that I have this. I do wish that, that it wasn't in hardcover because the rest of my series... Well, most of my series is in paperback and that's what I prefer. So like whenever this comes out in paperback, I will be replacing it, which um, might seem a little silly, but it's what I prefer. But yeah, I had to read it when it came out. And so I got the hardcover, but yeah, I picked that up right away when it came out. Next, I have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. After I watched the show adaptation, I really wanted to reread it and I didn't have a physical copy because I love the audiobook for this, but I wanted the physical copy to annotate in it and then also follow along with the audiobook. So that's what I did. I got this copy on Pango Books for really cheap and I annotated it in it. 
and I love it. But yeah, when the show came out, I was like, I need to have a physical copy on my shelf. <laughs> The next two books I picked up were the first two books in the Boys of Tommen series, so Binding 13 and Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh. I picked this up because of Lachlan at Lux Library and she just like raved about this series and I really wanted to try it. It is a sports romance set in Ireland and the sport is rugby. It's set at a secondary school so it's like a high school so they're high school age. They're pretty young like 15 and 17 I think 16 17 and it does tackle some darker topics like drug abuse and like domestic violence and like child abuse so definitely check trigger warnings if you're gonna read this series but I really liked it Shannon and Johnny are just so so cute and it's very slow burn like these books are so chunky and this is all just for their romance and yeah there's just a lot going on in this, but it's like very slice of life. So if that's your thing, I would give these a try because I really liked them. I also did really like the audiobook for them because the narrators are Irish and since it's set in Ireland, it's kind of nice. I do know that these got picked up by a traditional publisher, so I'm thinking that the covers are going to change since these are the self-published ones. I have my March book of the month pick, which I got Wayward by Amelia Hart. This is a three generation witchy book. So it follows three different characters, one in 2019, one in 1619, and one in 1942. And they're all somehow connected and you gotta read the story to figure out how they're connected. But yeah, it's very witchy and like naturalist. It reminded me a little bit of the Three Sisters Island trilogy by Nora Roberts. But yeah, this was my book of the month pick. I mostly picked it for the cover and I ended up really loving it. And then I got a couple add-ons, which I have since unhauled, so I won't even bother mentioning those, but I did really like Wayward. Next, we've got some manga and graphic novels. So first I will mention volumes five through nine of Spy Family. I have just been making my way through the series and really loving it and I've been picking them up as I read them like two or three at a time but I am now caught up. I just love the series so much and yeah I had the best time reading it. Again not a wrap up but I'm sad that I'm all the way caught up now though because now I have to just wait for the next volumes to come out but I've completed my set. Another manga I decided to try after I finished Spy Family was Witch Hat Atelier. So I have volume one here. This gives major Studio Ghibli vibes. If you are a fan of Studio Ghibli, I would highly recommend this manga. It feels like Kiki's Delivery Service mixed with Howl's Moving Castle a little bit. But yeah, I picked this up on a whim at Half Price Books and I really enjoyed it. So I'll definitely be continuing the series. I love the cover, so I do think I'm going to try to collect the series. But those are the only two manga besides Orange, which I didn't like, that I've read though. And I want to read more manga. So if you have some manga recommendations, leave them in the comments down below. Next up, I have the first three volumes of Lore Olympus, which I got on Pango Books for really cheap. Like I got all three of these. They're so heavy, <laughs> but it's a Hades and Persephone retelling. I love the art. I know they were originally webtoons, so I think you can still read the books like online, but I'm really enjoying reading them physically and like seeing all the art and stuff. So I'm waiting for them to come out physically. And the fourth volume comes out in June, so I'll definitely be getting that when it comes out. I got these and I really love them. These two I literally just hauled like 10 minutes ago. So the first one is Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lise. I really like The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lise and so I want to read more of her romances because that one is like a stunning five-star romance for me. And so I really want to read more from her backlist. And this one I think like came out last year maybe. So it says opposites become allies to fool their matchmaking friends in the swoony reimagining of Shakespeare's beloved comedy Much Ado About Nothing. So I've never read or like seen anything about Much Ado About Nothing but everything else sounds really good and... I'm really excited for this one so whenever I'm in a romance mood I'm picking this up. And then I have Astrid Parker Doesn't Fail by Ashley Herring Blake. This is the second book. I think it's the Bright Falls series. The first book is Delilah Green Doesn't Care and I really love that one. This is following Delilah's half-sister or stepsister. I can't remember but it's a sapphic romance and I really liked the first one so I'm eager to get to this one. I know the third book is coming out sometime this year. If it's not already out it might be already out so I wanted to pick this up whenever again whenever I'm in a romance mood. I have also hauled all of the Lady Julia Gray books by Deanna Rayborn. These are Deanna Rayborn's like first historical fiction mystery series 
and since I finished A Sinister Revenge I just wanted to see like if I would like her other books. So far I've only read the first one and I did really enjoy it so I ended up buying the rest of the series but I accidentally got a mass market paperback of the second one so it doesn't really match but you know what can you do. But yeah I got all of these used. Some of them are from Pango Books, some of them are from Thrift Books. I do really need to continue the series since I've only finished the first one but I really liked the first one so hopefully I like it. I don't think I like it as much as I like the Veronica Speedwell series but I think it'll be a good time. Next up I have a couple books that I bought when I was in Minnesota during my spring break. The first one is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. 100% bought this because of Rachel from Raven Haired Reader. I was in a local bookstore and I, I messaged my besties and was like, give me a book to buy. And Lachlan responded first, but she said tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. And I was only going to get it if they had it in paperback, but I don't think the paperback is out yet. They didn't even have a hardcover copy of it either, which is kind of surprising because it's kind of a big deal, but they didn't have it. So I took the next suggestion which was Rachel and she said Project Hail Mary so they did have that that is what I picked up read this book three times in three days I know again not a wrap-up but that's why I picked this one up it was just purely because of Rachel <laughs> and then from the Barnes and Noble in the Mall of America I bought the cat and mouse duet I think it's called so Haunting Adeline and Hunting Adeline by H.T. Carlton this is a stalker romance these are like really good paperbacks like the paper I don't know and they're like nice and floppy I love the feel of the covers and like the chapter headers have like or the chapter pages have like special pages which is really cool and I like the numbers on the spines I don't know why I'm telling you all this but I just I picked these up from the Mall of America I read these on ebook but I wanted the physical copies because I do really like this duet so that's why I got these. Another dark romance I got was Gothicana by Runix. I was just in the mood for something kind of spooky, kind of eerie, but still like a nice steamy romance and so I picked this one up. Again the physical copy of this like it's just so much better than the ebook copy because like there's always there's quotes and stuff and like the chapter headers there's like different art in it and it's again that like very matte buttery feel which I really like let's talk about all these books up here on my physical TBR because these are all books that I've hauled I'm just gonna let that happen okay so the happy ever after playlist let me pull actually we're gonna talk about all the Abby Jimenez books at once so first of all I read Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez and I absolutely loved this. This was a five-star romance. It's one of my favorite romances of all time. It's like a city girl, small town guy and you know how that goes. I absolutely loved this one and so then I picked up Yours Truly which was a newer release by Abby Jimenez. I think this came out in April and this is one of the best books that I've ever read. It has the best anxiety rep that I've ever read and I annotated in this one. I want to go back and reread and annotate in this one. But these were some of the best romances that I've ever read. They kind of remind me a little bit of Emily Henry's books. If you like Emily Henry's books, I would highly suggest these if you want something similar. So then I decided to pick up her backlist, which is this series. So the first book is The Friend Zone. I DNF this one. I didn't like it. The second book is The Happy Ever After Playlist, which I haven't read yet. And then the third is Life's Too Short, which I have read because this audiobook came in from my library before this one did. And so I read them out of order, but I'm fine with that. So yeah, I just have a little Abby Jimenez collection started. So I will definitely be picking up anything that she writes in the future because her two most recent books are some of my favorites of all time. And I did really enjoy this one. Her debut was a miss for me, but that's okay. I'm just going to pretend that that never happened. Okay, I picked up The Martian by Andy Weir because I loved Project Hail Mary so much and Rachel and I are going to buddy read this one and I just picked it up from Pango Books so I had a physical copy of it. I have seen the movie. I'm very excited to read this because I loved the movie so much and I don't think that's going to hinder my reading enjoyment just because I know what's going to happen. I think I'm still going to like it. So I'm excited to read this one because I loved Project Hail Mary so much and I really like Andy Weir's writing so 
Got that one. Okay, we're just taking them all down. I grabbed Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman because I think this is getting a cover change and I wanted this cover. So I picked it up. It's a dark romance where I think it's a woman and her sister's boyfriend or husband get trapped by like a serial killer and they're like emotionally manipulated to fall in love. And yeah, I have heard really good things about it and I just, I wanted to pick up a physical copy before the cover changed. I haven't read it yet, obviously it's on my physical TBR, but I'm gonna pick this up whenever I'm in the mood for something dark. I picked up Heavenly Bodies by Imani Iriu because I've seen some annotations of this on Instagram and I was intrigued and so I'm in a fantasy romance mood and this is a fantasy romance. It says, in a world ruled by the stars, cruel and merciless gods that watch over the world, Alara has been cursed by fate, a prophecy that promises she will fall for a star and it will kill them both. So that sounds amazing and I'm really excited to read this one. This one I'll be picking up very soon. At Half Price Books, I picked up Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune, which is her new release. I really liked Every Summer After. I read that one last year. It's a second chance romance set at a lake and I think this is like a lake house. I think this is the same kind of uh, feel to it. It'll be a good summer read. I also really love the cover of this one. TJ Klune's new book, In the Lives of Puppets, which I love TJ Klune's books. House in the Cerulean Sea is one of my favorite books of all time. And then I also really liked Under the Whispering Door. And so I was highly anticipating this book. I think it's possibly a Pinocchio retelling. I think there's gonna be some stunning found family vibes to this one. I also just really love the covers of TJ Klune's books. So I'm excited to get to this one. One of my most anticipated releases of this year. Adelaide by Genevieve Wheeler was my April book of the month pick. I've just heard some really great things about this one. It was compared to normal people. It's supposed to be like a really emotional love story. And so I'm intrigued, especially with the normal people comparison. Also the cover, absolutely stunning. I got the paperbacks of The Bear and the Nightingale and The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. I had the hardcovers, which weren't in like the best condition and also they're hardcovers and I just, I'm a paperback girl now. So I wanted the paperbacks. They're also so floppy. So I got these both on Pango Books and I'm very happy about it. I already had the third one. So my collection is complete. I got a copy of The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller because I want to reread this and annotate in it. I read this a few years ago and I remember really liking it. I think it gave it four stars, but the longer that I've sat with it, the story has still stuck with me. And there's so many stunning quotes in this that I just want to give it a reread and I think I'll appreciate it a lot more this time around. So I picked up a copy on Pango Books because again, Pango Books just, you can't go wrong. Next up is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This I just picked up because I saw it at Half Price Books and like I pulled it out and I remember people saying that the writing in this is really stunning. And they were right because I had to annotate in this. It was such good writing, so beautiful, so many good quotes. It's just like, I don't know, it just really hits you, hits you deep. So I really enjoyed this one. God, not a wrap up, okay. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> The next book that I got was Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I got the paperback because, again, I'm a paperback girly now. I got this on Book Depository like right before they closed, like shut down for good. So um, at least I got that. This is like a historical fiction fantasy following Emily Wilde, who is a professor at Cambridge and she studies fairies, obviously. And she goes on this expedition to study these fairies in like the far north. And she has this very annoying colleague, Bumblebee, who is like coming to assist her. And they have a little bit of like a rivals to lovers situation going on. Lots of fairy lore and lots of silly goofy times and I just really love this cover so I'm glad I got the paperback because the paperback's just so much more fun but yes I don't have anything else to say about that one. Oh here we go all right so <laughs> the next book up is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. This book listen the first printing absolutely stunning. I do really like this cover. I love the black on gold and I love like the shimmery gold. Also sprayed edges with dragons on it. Just absolutely gorgeous. I didn't want to miss getting the first edition printing of this because it has the dragons on the edges. So as soon as I knew that that was going to be like a, it's not going to stick around forever, I decided to get it, which it's like sold out everywhere now. So 
that's that. Um, and then next up I have some lovely Carissa Broadbent books. So I got Six Scorched Roses, which is the novella in the Crowns of Nyaxia world. This can be read as a standalone, however it's way more fun if you read it after you read The Serpent and the Wings of Night and before you read The Ashes and the Star Cursed King, which is the second book in the Crowns of Nyaxia series and the sequel to The Serpent and the Wings of Night and one of my most anticipated releases of this year. Also, Slaying the Vampire Conqueror by Carissa Broadbent. Why did I say that again? Um, I'm currently reading this one, but this is also set in the Crowns of Nyaxia world, and it is also a standalone. But again, way more fun if you know, like if you read it, if you read all of them. This world is like one of my favorite fantasy romance worlds. I would highly recommend all of these, and I really love the paperbacks. Ooh, stunning annotation tab moment. But yeah, the paperbacks are just like really well constructed. Unless you're Lachlan and hers is falling apart. But mine didn't fall apart and I really like the, the construction of these ones. The hardcovers are also very, very beautiful. So yeah, more Carissa Broadbent. Lovely. Okay, next up I have these stunning Crescent City editions from Illumicrates. So these are the like special edition ones. They're exclusive to Illumicrates and they're just absolutely gorgeous. So we have the first book, House of Earth and Blood. They've got this alternate dust jacket, which is really pretty. And then this foiling on the cover. And then some stunning sprayed edges. Art on the end page. And then it also came with page overlays, which I won't show because there are spoilers. And it's got a ribbon bookmark. It's just, I mean, absolutely gorgeous. I did an unboxing in one of my vlogs, which I'll leave linked down below if you wanted to see me go a little bit more in depth on this. But here is the second book, House of Sky and Breath, with the alternate dust jacket. And then again, stunning sprayed edges. These ones are blue. And then we've got the foiling on this one quote and then the end pages on this one absolutely stunning which leaves me with my very exciting unboxing it's the fairy loot special editions of the crescent city series let's open them together oh my god Okay, first of all, totally forgot that they came in a slip case. Let me peel the plastic wrapping off. Oh! Okay, oh my god. Okay, so this says Crescent City 1, House of Earth and Blood. Oh my god, the slip case. Look at that spine. Wait, let me open this one too. Okay, this one says Crescent City 2. House of Sky and Breath Fairy Loot exclusive with the signature on the back and the spine. The spines are so pretty. Okay, wait. <laughs> I'm too excited. Okay, let's open the first one. <gasps> okay, oh my god. The gold foil. Oh, look at the wolf with the gun. Lahaba. Oh my god. And the moon phase. This is so gorgeous. And then, of course, the stunning quote through love all is possible. Oh my god. Oh! I think I just died. I think my heart stopped. Okay. Here is some more gold foil. There's Bryce with her amulet. Okay, then through love all is possible. But then, the end pages. <gasps> this art is gorgeous. Oh my god. Okay, and then the back. My boys. Hunt with lava. Oh my god, and rune with the sword. 
right, time for House of Sky and Breath now. Gorgeous. Oh my God, a little otter. So pretty. And then light it up as the quote on the back. And then of course the moon phases again. So we have Hunt in the gold foil on the cover of this one. Oh my God, the light it up with the lightning, please. That's so beautiful. Okay, let's see who's on the end pages. I'm in love with them. Bryce, God, she looks so beautiful. Ooh. Okay, I think that's Ethan. And this is obviously Therian. Oh my God. I'm so happy that I have these. I remember being so worried that they were going to sell out. So I was like... <laughs> I was like on there in the queue and they were like, don't worry, it's not going to sell out. And I'm like, I'm not going to fall for that trap. Oh my God. These are so beautiful. I can't wait to put them on my shelf. Okay. So there you have it. Those are all of the books that I have hauled in the last three months. I'm not even sure how many books that is. So I'm going to pop up the number on the screen here because I'll count them. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, you can let me know by liking and subscribing down below to help support me and my channel. I'd really appreciate it. I also have my Goodreads and my Instagram link down below if you want more bookish content from me. You're always welcome to follow me on there. And thank you again so, so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye.